Uh, for the record, Josh Hinman, staff to this committee. The bill before you is in gross substitute House Bill 1260, accelerating stability for people with a work limiting disability or incapacity. <coughs> By way of background, the Department of Social and Health Services, known as DSHS, administers various cash assistance programs and also determines eligibility for referral to the Housing and Essential Needs Program, known as HEN, which is operated by the Department of Commerce. The Age Blind and Disabled Program, known as ABD, provides cash assistance and referral to the HEN program. ABD is also um, available to low-income individuals who are aged uh, 65 or older, are blind, or are determined likely to qualify for federal supplemental security income disability benefits. Uh, one reason a cash assistance recipient may be ineligible for HEN referral is if they fail to participate in substance use disorder treatment, known as SUD tre treatment, without good cause. Turning to the bill, Section 1 of 1260 allows DSHS to establish the, HEN and the ABD and HEN Countable Income Standard and Rule, which may not exceed 100% of the federal poverty level. Section 1 also provides a HEN good cause exemption for those who fail to participate in SUD treatment due to an inability to attend those treatments uh, due to the caring of a person or child in the home where day or child care is unavailable. Lastly, Section 1 also requires DSHS to share client data with commerce and other designated entities. Uh, these Section 1 provisions are expected to have a minimal or no fiscal impact. The fiscal impact lies in Section 3 of the bill, which allows for ABD recipients who success successfully transition to federal SSI to retain their backdated SSI payments effective October 2025. Under current process, when an ABD recipient transitions to SSI and receives a backdated payment for the months that had overlapped with the receipt of ABD assistance, those federal payments are considered a debt to the state. Under this bill, ABD payments on October 2025 and thereafter will not be remitted to the state when an ABD recipient later transitions to SSI. And there is a um, fiscal note. The department estimates 22.3 million in fiscal year 2024 and 27.6 million in fiscal year 2025 uh, in reduced backdated SSI payments uh, with this policy. This is the bulk of the fiscal impact. DSHS also estimates an increase in the ABD caseload due to no longer having to comply with the interim assistance reimbursement agreement process, which assigns the, SS, uh, the SSI um, payments as a debt to the state. DSHS estimates 1.5 million and 165 additional monthly cases for the ABD caseload associated with this. And uh, lastly, DSHS estimates a 2.6 FTE reduction staffing needed uh, due to reduction in SSI processing, which is approximately 270,000 per year as an offset to costs. Total fiscal impact is estimated to be uh, zero in the upcoming biennium and 51 million in the 2025-2027 biennium. And uh, with that, I'm available for questions. Senator Mullet, do you have a question? No? Anybody have a question? <laughs> Just trying to maintain control over my committee. <laughs> Is there anybody who else who has a question on this? Okay. Thank you, Josh. We have a number of people signed in to testify. Um, let's start with Michelle Thomas, who is with us remotely. And then after Michelle, we'll... Oh, well, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Michelle, after Michelle, I also have remote or Babs Roberts and Anne Marie um, Eilward. But if you're here in person, please come up. Michelle, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm Michelle Thomas with the Washington Low Income Housing Alliance Pro on House Bill 1260. This bill will improve equity and it will increase stability for a population that is otherwise very at risk of housing instability and homelessness. People on ABD have either a physical or behavioral health disability, oftentimes both. The policy change in this bill will end a long practice of forcing disabled and extremely low income people to pay back their SSI, um, to forgo their SSI back payments, which they desperately need. Um, Please understand that simultaneously, when people are required to repay these SSI back payments, they also lose their eligibility for the Housing and Essential Needs Rental Assistance Program. I mean, this program combined with that really kicks the feet out of people um, once they were otherwise supposed to get stability from getting their SSI payments um, and getting on the program. And this is a really at-risk population. It's in everybody's interest fiscally and morally to support them and their road to stability. 
The bill um, will help prevent future involvement in other state-funded systems of care. House Bill 1260 is money well spent, well spent to improve housing stability. I also want to note that DSHS's assumption in the fiscal note that more people will get onto the ABD program because of this policy change I think is extremely faulty. One of the cruelest things about this is that people don't even know that they are going to be forced to pay these um, SSI payments back. They do have to sign an agreement, but most people don't even remember um, signing that. So I think that that's a pretty false assumption on DSHS's part. Thank you. Thank you. That, uh, thank you for speaking to that fiscal point, too. That's helpful. Yeah. All right. Next is Babs Roberts. Good afternoon, Chair of Office, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Babs Roberts, and I have the privilege of serving as the director for the Community Services Division at the Department of Social and Health Services. Our administration is responsible for providing critical services and supports to our state's most vulnerable people, including those who are elderly or living with a work-limiting disability or incapacity, such as the recipients of the Aged, Blind, and Disabled Program and the Housing and Essential Needs Referral Program. I thank you for the opportunity to testify today, and I urge the committee's support of House Bill 1260, helping to combat poverty by returning resources to, to those who need them most. Currently, when an ABD recipient is approved for federal SSI, the state garnishes a portion of a client's initial lump sum settlement as a reimbursement for the applicable ABD cash benefits that are paid to the client. For individuals with legal representation, attorney fees are also recouped from that lump sum payment up to $6,000. Washingtonians receiving SSI are living well below the federal poverty level. For 2023, the maximum SSI monthly payment was $914 a month, an annual income of about $11,000, and equaling only 75% of the federal poverty level. This amount does not meet the need standard for any single individual anywhere in the state. Given the stark reality, Washington's garnishment of interim assistance results in significant hardship for disabled individuals, and the, this bill would end that practice. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and I will hand it to my, um, uh, my peer, <laughs> Anna Howard. Thank you, and it looks like Anne-Marie is here in person. I think it's okay. Yes, I am in person. Thanks, Babs. Um, good afternoon, Chair Rolfs and members of the committee. My name is Anna Elward, and I am the Director of Finance and Financial Resources with the Department of Social and Health Services, Economic Services Administration. And I'm here again to, re to request the committee's supportive and gross substitute House Bill 1260. As you've heard, uh, the bill promotes economic stability for aged, blind, or disabled program recipients by eliminating the repayment requirement for ABD recipients who transition to federal supplemental security income. It's important, it's been colored by colleagues, it's important to note that the aged, blind, and disabled population have very high rates of homelessness. Right now it's about 31% homeless. They the age blind or disabled recipients also have a high percentage of mental health disabilities, typically at 57% currently. And the age blind or disabled recipients have, are among the poorest people in Washington state. So we hope this committee will agree that eliminating the interim reimbursement burden for ABD recipients is the right thing to do. Again, thank you for your time today and happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing this bill before us. I don't think many of us were aware of this practice until you did that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up is Melanie Smith. Good afternoon, Chair Rolfes and members of the committee. I'm Melanie Smith testifying on behalf of the Seattle King County Coalition on Homelessness, and we are also here in strong support of House Bill 1260. As you heard, this, is a prom this promotes economic security, not just for the individuals, but I would argue for your state budget as well. When individuals become homeless or at risk of homelessness, that costs an enormous amount of money to rehouse them. It is far less expensive to keep them in their housing that they're in than it is to rehouse them after that is gone, whether or not they go through a shelter or permanent supportive housing or other other, other needs. We know that lots of people become homeless when they have an economic shock, when they have an unexpected expense or something that causes them to blow through their budget, they can't pay their rent, and all of a sudden what, what was a stable person becomes an unstably housed human being, and then next they find themselves being without a home. And so this, this little cushion that will give people a little bit of extra flexibility in their budget so that the 900 plus dollars that they get a month will allow them to successfully live in our very expensive state, I think is a good investment 
investment for them and a good investment for you. And I heartily commend this bill to you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Highwin, and then Eric Pinar. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Hui Nguyen. Uh -huh. I am the executive director of the Benefits Law Center. We help people with disabilities access their social security benefits. Uh, we see client after client who have waited years to be approved for SSI, only to be told that they're going to lose their hen housing. Uh, there are few options or referrals to help them find affordable housing, and the outcome is frequently homelessness. To make matters worse, our clients' retroactive benefits are dramatically reduced as a result of ABD back pay and attorney fees of up to 25%. This means that our clients are unable to afford to purchase exempt resources such as a home, first and last month's rent, or medical equipment. Removing the ABD back pay and extending HEN makes fiscal sense. By extending HEN, this will reduce homelessness for new SSI recipients, which means one less emergency shelter bed to fund. With stable housing, this would also mean better health care outcomes for our clients, reducing overall health care costs and Medicaid expenses for the state. For the most vulnerable communities, for example, people with behavioral or mental health disabilities, housing instability ensures that their medical conditions are not further exacerbated that requires costly medical care by the state. As you know, Washington is experiencing a homelessness crisis, removing ABD back pay, and extending HEN is key to ending homelessness with the cost savings for the state. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And last up is Eric Pinar. Hello, my name is Eric Pinar. I'm an attorney in Spokane who helps people with social security disability claims. I'm in support of HB 1260. This bill could allow SSI recipients to achieve stability by keeping more of their SSI money. SSI claims have asset limits. When income, uh, where income and Medicaid benefits are revoked if an individual saves more than $2,000. This makes it difficult to save for housing deposits because saving could terminate ongoing SSI benefits. But there is a one-time exception to this rule. When a person wins their SSI case and is awarded back pay, they are allowed to hold this money for nine months while they spend it down. If a claimant did not have to repay ABD, they could use this money to find housing instability. The financial impacts are justifiable because housed and stable people are less likely to use state resources in the future. These are vulnerable individuals. They are disabled and the federal government has agreed they are unable to work due to physical or mental health. Yet the instability caused by ABD repayment leads to poor outcomes. Attempting to manage Severe medical conditions such as kidney failure while homeless leads to increased medical complications and therefore increased costs to Medicaid. Passing HB 1260 would increase housing, increase stability, and decrease interaction with care that is state funded. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That concludes our public hearing on Engrossed Substitute House Bill 1260.